<laughs> okay, now. <laughs> you shall make a window for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubit from above, and set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with the Lord's second and third pick. Behold, I myself am bringing wood. I must. I. I felt I am bringing floor waters on the earth. Do got to be flood waters. Oh, okay. <laughs> with waters on the earth, destroyed from under the heavens of all the flesh, which is the the need of life, breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. Okay, stop. Uh, uh, Houston, so I started at 18, read 18 through 22. <laughs> I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you, and of every living being of all flesh. You shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. It shall be male, male and female in of the birds after the kind, of animals after the kind, and of every creeping thing on the earth after its kind, two of every kind, will come to you, keep them alive. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. Thus no it is. According to Paul, God commanded him. Okay, all right. So, so that's the story, and it, we we kind of know the story, right? Of Noah, uh, the earth, the world was wicked. Uh, God said that uh, uh, He's going to destroy every living thing, but it, it, it uh, said Noah was a righteous man and asked wanted Noah to build, commanded the Noah build. And oh, so this story, now, so this story about no, it's a, it's, a, it's a story about faith, obedience, and judgment. Uh, so we want to try to look at that. We want to try to look at this a little bit today, and see if uh, we can can examine the characteristics of Noah's faith, the kind of faith that allowed him to stand out in a world that was drowning with sin. So uh, let's go back, James, let's go back a little bit and read uh, Genesis 6, 5 through 7, please. Mm -hmm. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on earth and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Cam. Okay, no, stop this. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, James. Stop, stop. Stop. What, 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 really want you, you read what I really wanted to get to, and that was uh, in nine. Read nine again for me. Mm-hmm. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Okay. All right. Now, so so uh, uh, this shows that, that Noah was was the, the opposite of all the, his contemporaries, right? He, he, he they all they all described as wicked because Noah's on, Noah's the only one that's, that's that the scripture says is righteous, right? So everybody else is wicked, and despite all the wickednesses around him, Noah obviously remained. Steadfast in his relationship with God, right? Uh, and so, and, and which means that, that it was a genuine 
reflection of his faith because God singled him out among all the other people that were that were um, wicked, right? That so this would show that that, that Noah had Noah's relationship with God was one where God considered him righteous, as righteous as a human being can be, right, in contrast to all the other people who were wicked. So he asked Noah to do something that uh, um, probably seemed at the time to be absurd. Now, I, I'll, I'll use that word absurd. So, Johnny, read uh, Genesis 6, 14 through 17. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. You should make the ark with moon. and shall cover it with Now this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark is 300 cubits. It's breadth 60 cubits. And it's length, excuse me, and it's height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark and finish it and will keep it from the top and set the door of the ark on the side of it. You shall make it with lower, second, and third deck. And behold, I even, I am bringing the flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life from under the heaven. Everything that is on the earth will perish. Okay, now, 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 he's told him to build this big Oh, right, uh, which at the time may have seemed to be absurd, but absurd. But now we remember it in verse 22 of chapter 6. What does this say? Somebody find it. Right, right. He, right. he obeyed without question, apparently. So, so which is a testament of his trust in God's word, even though, even though at that time it would have defied human logic. So sometimes when God, uh, when we have to walk in faith on something that God has promised us, or this in scripture, it has to, something that defies human life, we can't logically try to figure it out. You know, if we believe that it's God, then we, we, have, to, we have to be convinced. Uh, we have to convince ourselves, I'll be convinced, by God. And if you remember what I said about the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit has tells you to do something, it be, will be confirmed somehow. So if God says to do it, even though it, it, it defies human logic, we should do it, like Noah. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this is true. Uh, here's some reasons to, that, 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 uh, uh, that Noah would have had to have really strong faith in God to do this, right? To, in, in God uh, to do what God commanded him to do. Okay. Um, first of all, you know, remember now, because this is this was to save Noah, his wife, his sons, and his son's wives. So and and so what God is asking him to do doesn't seem at for the time at the time it doesn't seem logical. One, uh uh um, the idea of a worldwide flood would have been foreign to them because that because uh, that it looks like from scripture that it has not it has never rained right that it has never rained because we don't read anything about rain until after the ark is finished right so he said build this ark. I'm going to flood the earth, uh, and he never said how, but he because he never the rain is never mentioned until later. For example, okay, uh, uh, go to uh, Sarah, Genesis two, five and six. So when no plant of the field was yet on earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, the Lord had not yet caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no man to go down. But when 
But there went up a mist fog vapor from the land and watered the whole surface of the mountain. Okay, so okay, so God has told Noah to build this ark and it with the, with this with this specification, right? Uh, and all we got is mist that that waters the that, that you know waters the plants, the plants grow. So, uh, but he says, I'm going to flood all this whole earth, so build this ark. He had to believe God because there's no something he's ever seen, or anybody's ever seen that would that would that would the, would act look like God would anything that God could flood the earth because. Uh, and and Noah, then Noah built the ark, right? Then, after the ark is built, is the first we see about anything about rain. Look at uh, Genesis 7. Now, we just read, I was in Genesis 2. Look in Genesis 7, so, and we're, so we assume this chronological. So look at Genesis 7. Look at verses uh, 1 through 4, uh, Jeanette. And the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, and you and all your household. But I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven of each of every clean animal, a male and his female, to each of the animals that are unclean, a male and his female. Also, seven each of birds of the air, male and female, keep the species alive on the face of all the earth. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And I will destroy from the face of the earth all the things that I have made. All right. So, okay. So Noah has, based on what God said, built this ark without any evidence of, that, that, that a, 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 a worldwide flood could take place. And then after the ark is built, God tells them how it's going to happen. Forty, uh, forty days and forty nights of rain, uh, and that's going to flood it, and that's going to wipe out everything. That's number one. Number two, building an ark, a boat, big enough <laughs> to to house. So this, it's, this sounds nuts, doesn't it? Yeah. But we believe it happened because it did, right? Okay, uh, building an ark uh, big enough to house e two of every species would have been a massive undertaking, even if Noah had the tools we have today. He did not, right? So, so based on what God said, Noah went about to do what God commanded him. To do so, and so despite all these challenges, see, never seeing all of any of this stuff, not having, not having the tools that we have today, uh, he followed God's instruction and he built the ark. Uh, uh, and, and it's it that's obviously an act of obedience and faith and trust in God's plan. God's plan is going, to, is going to, I'm going to wipe out everybody except your family. And in order for your family to be safe, build this ark. Uh, and then two of, two, you know, two of every creature, all that kind of stuff. All right? Now, now building the ark, and what we're talking about is faith, extraordinary faith. And we're going to talk at the end of, of just, just some questions is how we can, can get faith like this, not, not, the kind, not the faith that Noah had. He, God, God hasn't asked us, well, I don't know. God may not ask us to build an ark. He might. <laughs> I have no idea. You know, look, looking, at the, looking at the specs and people that, that are experts on specs, it's, it was big, right? Uh, okay, it was a, it, it, and, so, and it, so it would have taken, now, we have to make some assumptions, uh, you know, based on Scripture. Uh, we have to assume that only Noah and his sons worked, right? So it would have been a huge undertaking. Probably it would have taken many years, right? Uh, and which would have would have required perseverance, 
and patience. And we've talked about, in scriptures, to talk about faith and perseverance in, in the same context, right? So we're taking, we're taking patience and perseverance, but Noah was committed to doing what God told him to do despite everything that was going on around him, despite not having the right stuff, despite never having seen any of this stuff before. Noah went about doing it, and, uh, you know, maybe if, you know, people said he faced skepticism and people laughed. I, I don't know. Scripture doesn't say that, but it makes sense that people would have you know, asked him, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing? We, you know, we never had enough water to float a boat. What is this? So we, you know, he may have, what is, you, what is this you're doing? What are you doing? Uh, what are you, you guys, it's a waste of time. Right, so uh, it, it would have been, it would have taken a lot of more, a lot of patience, a lot of perseverance, and a lot of faith to do, because he did, only did this, the reason he did this was why? Because God told him to do it, and God told him to do it so he could save his family, because God's going to wipe out, that's what he said, I'm going to wipe out every living creature. That's what God said. So, so uh, uh, the work and the time uh, would have tested uh, anybody's patience. Would have tested his faith, Noah's faith. And let, let's just say, for example, I'll use me for example. Uh, if God, God has said that there's certain things would happen in my life, right, and if they don't happen after two or three years. I begin to wonder whether it will ever happen, and I may I may change course. Mm -hmm. No, it did not. He said, "Build, I'm going to do this. Build an ark, and he built it." And it may have taken time. Now, what we what the thing for us is if if God has said something to us, or we grab a promise of God from Scripture, we must stay the course no matter what happens because one of the enemy's tactics is to cause doubt or, or foster some doubt in your mind, skepticism <laughs> that, it, that it will ha ever happen. So we have to stay the course because it's easy to get this, especially if, if, it, if it's years and nothing, and nothing has happened. We begin to want to, to, a couple things we begin to think about. One, Mm -hmm. Is this really God's plan for me? You know, maybe I should look for another plan. Uh, or maybe this wasn't really wasn't God. So but we, if we're convinced that, and there's nothing happens that would indicate that it wasn't God, then we must stay the course. And Noah's a good example of someone who stayed the course despite the obstacles and, more, and with time being one of the obstacles. He continued to trust in God's timing, not his timing, God's timing. And we don't know God's timing, right? Until, mm -hmm. Unless he tells us. He told Noah, you better get in the ark because in seven days this is going to rain, <laughs> right? Beforehand, he didn't, didn't give any timetable. I'm just going to destroy the earth. But after the ark is finished, he said, in seven days, I'm going to start, it's going to start raining. So now go in the ark. So until we hear something specific from God, what we have to do, our task <laughs> is to persevere and continue to stay the course. Right? Pastor, so, you so uh, uh, yes. Um, you know, uh, when we have to not only look at Noah's faith, but, you know, what, what I see here, the, it says God spoke to Noah, not his wife. You know, so she had a tremendous amount of faith also to persevere, you know, and, and his family. I had not thought about that. Yeah. I had not thought about mm -hmm. that. Thank you. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, James. It, but in, uh, in order to hang in there with Noah, she had to believe, and the sons had to believe, right? Uh, and, and so that 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 trust was either in Noah or in God, but right? we know God. We know Noah was God. So uh, uh, so 
so they had to trust either that no one knew what he was doing based on what God told him or something. But thank you for that. I had never thought of that, James. I had never thought of that. Thank you, thank you, thank I, you, I, <laughs> thank you for that. I just, you know, I, I just think about, you know, um, you know, be, being married myself, you know, uh, um, you know, if, if uh, you know, trying to convince, um, you know, my, my wife to do certain things, you know, so, you know, that uh, I can, I can imagine. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, no, and I, no, I hear you. I understand that. I understand it. And I never, I had never actually thought of that, James. But that is a an excellent point. Because mm-hmm. uh, she went in the ark with him, so she stayed, obviously. And the ark got built, and and so and the sons and their wives all, all went in the ark. We know that. Uh, we don't know that his sons helped build the ark. But, but we can assume that. But we know that his sons went in there with him uh, because that's what it says in Scripture. So they believed him, right? Uh, so when it starts raining, right, they uh, realize that Noah knows something, and uh, so they went. So I thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, his, now, Noah's example of faith is a powerful example for us today. Uh, his, his obedience, his rights, his patience, patience, his perseverance, and his hope are great examples for us today, especially today, because we and people around us are, uh, are, uh, have to deal with, and, and so we and people around us right, have to deal with doubt. We have to deal with this. We have to deal with fear and with patience and despair, right? Uh, so, and so by, by our study of Noah's life and, and others as we, as we go uh, uh, and their faith, we sh- this hopefully will inspire us to deepen our own relationships with God and trust God's promises no matter what the circumstances. That's where we we all need to get there, and uh, we all are not there. Maybe I don't. You know, I'd like to think I'm there, but you know, I don't. You know, I I don't know. I I trust God. I know that, and I believe Him, uh, and so I believe that 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 I would do this. But I need examples of Noah and other examples of people today to cause me to uh, to. Continue to perse to persevere, right? Because the other because the ark is, is, is a tangible representation of God's promise of salvation. That's one thing. He promised that Noah, his wife, his sons, and sons' wives would be saved from judgment. Right? God was judging the world and the wicked people in the world. He said, if you obey me, Noah, I'm going to save you, your wife, your son, and your son's wives. So that's a picture of God's promise of salvation that we can look at, right? Uh, uh, Noah's Noah's belief was that God would preserve his life and the life of his family, and that whatever after after that was going to be something new, a new beginning. So, so his obedience to God's instructions are a testament to his hope and an example for us. Do you agree with that? Okay, okay. Now, here's some questions for us to, to just to, to contemplate and maybe answer if we can today talk about them. Uh, how can we uh, cultivate a righteous character, kind of like Noah, in a world that's filled with sin? With sin? How can we? Do, how can we? How can we cultivate a life, a, a character, a righteous character, in a world that is filled with sin? 
Anybody got any? One more. We're we, we, we can pray. We can study. Uh, we, 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 you know, we can pray. We can study. We can hang around other people uh, uh, with faith. You know, with with, with with other people that that have faith. We can. That, so, and those things will help us to cultivate a lifestyle that is righteous. Uh, in, in 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 a world that where we're surrounded with sin, we don't cannot isolate ourselves because scripture. If we did that, we would be going against something Jesus said do. You know, he said, Jesus said, go into the world. Now the world is filled with sin, right? So we, if we in a world filled with sin, we have to protect ourselves. And we you know, we got the arm of God, which, right, which 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 we can can use for protection. Uh, study the Word of God. Pray, spend time in communion with God and with other people who are going through the same kind of thing because they're battling the same sin that we're battling. So that'll help us to cultivate a life, a righteous character in a world filled with sin. That's my comment. Now, you know, I don't know if anybody else made somebody else may have some other ideas. First, you have to hear from God. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So that leads me to. Prayer that we do every Sunday. What he, Jesus teaches us, go into your closet, shut the door, pray to your father in secret, and when the father sees the secret, he'll go, Lord, you know. But that applies to me personally, which I think was one for everybody else. No, Jesus didn't have a closet to go into. And he wasn't speaking of a literal material closet. He was speaking of your heart. And this is how it worked for me. Because to shut out sin and to be able to talk to God and to hear from him. This is the first thing. So it's in your heart. When you pray the Lord's Prayer out loud, you come at the same time, why don't you come? At the same time, you are hidden Sins in your head, things that you won't even say to yourself that you hate it, but it's there and you're doing it. You shut that door, all the world out, and inside it's just you and God. You let Him know exactly what that hidden sin is, and God will show you how we're made out to. To do it. I don't know. Yeah, I had to say that because okay. it's something I'm going through. Okay, okay, okay. And, right, right. Any, any, any other thoughts? Right, right. Because we, we all we all go through things, and we all have to figure out how to right how to do that. Right, Cause, oh, right. Because what, what we what we have to do is we, if we're surrounded by sin, what we have to do is is work on how to keep ourselves from getting corrupted by the sin. First of all, <laughs> to have a relationship talking to God, Him relating back. That certainly helps. Right. That that certainly yeah, that certainly that certainly helps. Talking, spending time talking with God and letting God know how you feel, mm-hmm. what's going on, and ask Him, asking Him, ask God to help you deal with what is going on. For example, if if we doubt, ask God to help you. Deal with it. I mean, you can't. It's just like we were talking about. Before. You can't. There's something you can't. You can't. If you just ignore something, it's never solved. So if 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 you if you if you, if you if have doubt, uh, just don't say, "Well, I, I don't have doubt. I'm not supposed to have doubt. I'm not supposed to have doubt." But you have doubt. Ask God. Say, "Come clean," and say, "God, I don't understand this." I have some doubt. I see this and that. Help me get over this doubt, and God will do that. We're sincere in 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 asking. So we we can't we can't we can't hide stuff. First of all, from God, uh, and if by hiding it we don't help ourselves, because then we don't ask for the help that we can get. So that that. that And um, I started taking this Bible plan about that. 
and it made me see that, um, uh, and I prayed about the doubts that I was having, and it brought me out of the doubts that I was having. And I feel much better now. I'll be out of here. Yeah, it, it, right. It'll help, and that, that, that's a good way. Right? She, she was able to uh, find a Bible plan that dealt with doubt, with scriptures that talked about doubt. So, so yeah. those that, that kind of those kinds of things are available. Yeah. We just need to to do the research to find them, because God, the word scripture says that God has already provided everything we need for life and godliness. Hallelujah. Doesn't say, it says it's already provided. Now, it's up to us. Sometimes it's up to us to dig it out. Yeah. Now, we can ask God to, to help point me in the right direction. But, but we, it's up to us to dig it out because it's already there. Yeah. God is already provided. You know what else that helped me is my kids. Who my kids They kept saying, are you doubting? Are you, are you doubting God? I'm like, yeah, yes, I am. You know, and that's what made me go in and look at myself and, you know, get the self plan. So it's all about. But you remember one thing I said is, is, is being around people that care for you yeah. that, that are, are, are Christians because right. uh, they can help you. Yeah. You know, they, they can help you by stuff that they say uh, or do that will help you maintain your relationship or, or 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 bolster your faith doesn't mean doesn't mean we don't have faith, but right? there are times where our faith takes a hit and gets weakened, and we need to remind ourselves that that that, that to trust God because of and listen, we got examples we got no we got other people examples that we can look at. But it, it really helps if we got if we could have used as an example of somebody we know personally or that we deal with every day that we may or may not expect to come up with what they say. The Holy Spirit can can and does use people. If if the Holy Spirit can use the wicked, if the Holy Spirit used if God uses Babylon to fix uh, and Assyria to fix Israel. And they were wicked, wicked, wicked nations uh, that cared nothing about God, but God used them uh, to for His people, right, to save His people. And you know what else? I've been reading John four, four, which is greatest He that is in you, and He that is in the world. Okay, John, what now? What is it again? First John four four. First John four four. Mm-hmm. Greatest He that is in you, than He that is in the world. What does that mean? To us, anybody? No, I have to tell the Bible. Okay, that's. Yeah, when I'm in Him, God, but you have more power over the enemy. Yeah. Right, 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 right. The enemy is powerful. Yeah. But but the one that's in you and and the the, the, whole, the Holy Spirit is in you. Right. Mm-hmm. So the one that's in you. Is more powerful than the one out who, who, who is powerful, right? right? Don't 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 underestimate the power of Satan, but but remember that the one in you is more powerful even than that. Yes, excuse me. But is it too much that Satan is in control of this world today? Does that mean that two of them is in is in control of the world system? Yes. But God, right? God, God has control. Right? God has control over him. But, but God, but as of right now, God has allowed Satan to to have control of the world system. The world system, not the kingdom of God. See, the world system and God's kingdom are two entirely different things, right? So, so Satan has 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 the power over the world system, but and but and that won't be forever. We've talked about that too. And it won't be forever, but for the time being, he does. But even though he does, greater is he that's in you than him. So, so when we talked about, we live in a world that is corrupt, right? A system is corrupt, 
with sin, right? We live in it, and, and, and Jesus talks about Jesus, Jesus in his prayer in John 17 said he wasn't praying to God to take us out of the world. He's talking about the world system, but that we can deal with it, that we, you know, we will be protected during the world, doing it. Okay? Uh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, we will. Right, 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 right. And that's that's a, it's an accuracy. One of what caution us about though is 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 it, it says that you he's not he's he's not talking about you apart from him. Oh yeah. Right. When you when because you apart from Jesus have no power. Yeah. Over the enemy, with Jesus, you have power. You do have power over him. Yeah, I would. Uh, Where, Doctor Jacob? Uh, I only know one way out of my mouth to bend against Satan's systems, and that is. I plead the blood of Jesus. I do that every Wednesday. Just right I'm there. I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus. Give me a fresh one. Blood of Jesus all over all of my body because I'm going out there to mix them. Every day is all the power of blood of God. Tortles. That's the only one I know. Are there any others? I should that that. Okay. That's the best way. That's the best. That's the best way. The only, the, the only way. The only way I can can. Uh, I don't have anything better than that. No, no. <laughs> that's what. Let me ask a question. Because you, you you brought up some question. What does it mean? I plead the blood of Jesus. What does that mean? Objection. Anybody, anybody. What does that mean? Well, it's, it's a, you just said it, so you, you're sitting here first. A court setting. No, no, okay. Simplify. No, let's, no, no, let's, don't, don't be, let's, let's not, let's don't be religious. Let's be, simplify what you're saying. What? In other words, you're asking God. I see you not talking to anything else but your pop. You're asking him to release. There's blood in heaven. Okay. And Jesus took up there and it will never run out. So you ask the Father God to give you some of the help to protect you. You can even draw. Say, Father God, give me some blood so I can draw a line in front of my apartment door. Protect anything to try to not abuse each other across that blood line. It will not do it. I I can understand what you what you mean. I can understand what you mean, Houston. But if you were out on the street and you were talking with somebody, yeah. they would they wouldn't have they would have no idea yeah. of what you was talking about. Yeah. So what what would share what said something? Had your hand up. I gotta think that whatever that Jesus sacrificed one blood for, that's what you're asking for to what did Jesus sacrifice for me? Well, he was um, died for our sins. He was being a redeemer. He was sanctified. He was being the answer of the Holy Spirit. All of the blood represents. Okay. Okay. But, okay. Right? And Houston talks about protection. That's, 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 that's absolutely true. Uh, but so, but what I'm getting at, we, oh, uh, we all understand that. We're all Christians, right? Uh, but Christians, we Christians, have a tendency to talk Christianese, and that's okay when we're talking to other Christians. But it, but 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 our task is to go out and preach the word. We can't. So people won't. We need to. People need to understand what we're saying, right? Uh, so that, that's why I asked for the pe- peanut butter. I'm saying, and I, I do know what you're talking about, but, okay. but, if, but if you were talking to someone else, what does that mean? That's why I asked, what does that mean to pay the peanut butter? Yeah, I, 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 I should have said that. What does that mean if we were talking to somebody else? 
we're talking about. Well, he's bringing himself a lot himself when he goes out there. Right, right, right. He's not saying the blood. You're not saying the blood of Jesus to anybody, right? No. <laughs> no, right. But right. That, that's the point. But 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 if he's protected, if he can do that, right, then. I should be able to, the, other, the people I'm talking to, I should be able to tell, to talk to them so that they can come to the point where they, they would, they can do that, accept that, do that, right? So how do, how do, what does that mean? Okay. And Sarah's point, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah was right. Sarah, Sarah said, Sarah, the brother means uh, redemption, forgiveness, and salvation. That's that's what the Jesus died. Jesus blood, right? Jesus blood was for Jesus shed his blood for our salvation. It was a sacrifice. He shed his blood for our salvation. Now, because we're saved, all this other stuff happens, right? Yeah. So, 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 what Sarah said and what you said are the same or. Absolutely right. But what Sarah said would be the kinds of thing I could say to somebody out on the street that they may understand. They wouldn't understand you then. They would understand you after they understood what what Sarah had said, right? Say so we have to be we had to be careful when we witness. We have to be very careful that we don't use Christian slogans. And word. Absolutely correct. Because it means scripture says uh, tells us that that that, 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 that spiritual things can only be understood from a spiritual, spiritual spiritual perspective. So if you don't get it, if you don't have it, then you won't understand some of the stuff we're saying. And that's what I'm saying. It is getting so much worse. I'm right. It's going to get worse. And I'm going to kill you because of Jesus. Yeah, and it's going to get and it's going to get worse. We talked about that. We've talked about that in our previous. It's going to get worse. So one, one, be careful. Oh, right. Uh, be careful when you go out. Do, do, please, brother Jesus, when you go out, oh, yeah. right, <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. And be careful because, and like Noah. These days are not diff much different from Noah. The, the world was so bad that God said, I'm going to wipe everybody out. Right? So that means it was bad, right? The world, so the world today is just as bad. I mean, we like to look back in the past, and the, or like to add, yeah, it was in the past. But if we look at, if we look at the, the reasons for judgment are still the same today. As it were, man. My experience is that there are angels and demons in human form. Not well up there, man. Up, up, up there, up there, up. You said up there. Yeah, I'm well too much. Oh, <laughs> okay. There are angels and okay. 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 Yep. Okay. All right. So we talked. We talked about that. now. One last one, and I know we're over time, but just just one. One. This is the last point. Uh, Noah did have exhibit his faith by uh, building the ark. He also uh, the the story gives us also another promise of God oh, that we should accept by faith. That I believe. No, we did. Go, go to uh, go to Johnny. Go to Genesis eight, nine, nine, and eight through. I don't. Want, I don't. Want, well, maybe this is eight through seventeen is what I have. I don't know if we need to read the whole thing. Eight, start at eight. Yeah. Now behold, I myself establish my covenant with you, and descendants back to you, and with every living creature that is with you, birds, the cattle, and every beast on earth with you, of all that come out of the ark, even every beast of the earth. And I establish my covenant with you, and all flesh shall never again be cut off by the water of the flood. Neither shall there again be a flood to destroy the earth. And thou said, 
This is the sign of the covenant which I am making between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all the successive generations. I set my fall in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come all about when I bring a cloud over the earth, I fall for the city in the clouds. Uh, 217. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. Never again shall the water become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the law is in the cloud, then I will look up on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living thing every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Okay, so the, the uh, bow, she's talking about boy, she's talking about it's a rainbow. Uh, uh, it's the, it's, it's, it, it, you know, the rainbow symbolizes, the rainbow is a, is a symbol of hope. So a covenant with Noah, they made with Noah. Uh, uh, hope, grace, and God's Enduring love. And what that reminds us of is even in the darkest times, you know, that was a flood to destroy everything. Even in the darkest times, there's always God has given us a promise of a brighter future. And that, that promise for our future is Christ Jesus' second coming. Right? All right. So we're going to end with that. And then I I don't know who's next in in Hebrews. Who's next? What's your next one after Noah? Who else is next? Huh? Abraham. Abraham. We did Abraham. So Sarah, we're going to be Sarah. So we'll talk about Sarah next week. All right. Any other comments? Huh? Yes. Yes. Can you explain the difference between this 8 foot one? Okay, read, read them for me. Okay, what you, what you ask, guys, since you didn't hear, the dip, the, to explain the difference between Genesis, what? 821. 821 and? Okay, so she's going to read them. Okay. Genesis 821. And the large smell was sitting alone and said, Himself, I will never again curse the earth on account of man, for the intent of man. And I will never again for every I have done. Okay, all right. And Peter, seven Peter, three and. Okay. Okay. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with their door, and the elements will be destroyed, and the earth, and its works will be burned up. Because the works are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people are to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God on account of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with the intense heat. Okay, all right. Okay. Now, the Genesis thing you read about, which is after the flood, that was after uh, Noah and Noah sacrificed after the flood. Right, uh, and God uh, was pleased with the sacrifice, and He said, "I'm not going to destroy the earth this way anymore." All right? Okay. The Second Peter reference is to the day of the Lord, where where the where the earth the, the earth with earth and heavens is it will be destroyed with intense heat or fire, right? And that everybody everything is going to be destroyed. Now, remember. We're talking about we're talking about we're talking about is the earth as it existed in Noah's day and today, right? Uh, it's going to be destroyed. 
Uh, scripture does tells us so, uh, uh, that that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, right? So the, the old heaven and, and earth what exists today. Heaven meaning not where God lives. So heaven meaning the atmosphere, right? All of that's going to be uh, destroyed. And, and we replaced with something new, but it's not going to be a flood this time. Does that answer your question, or did you have was it something specific? Uh, well, I know it's not going to be a flood. Right. We don't know what the intensity is. Intensity is that's what you want to know if you're asking. Uh, okay, but. Yeah, let me get through. There's something specific to address. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Okay. It says all things are destroyed. Okay. Um, remember when we remember when we discussed this. Uh, I can't remember the the uh, Bible study, but remember we talked about the rapture, yeah. all right, uh, and uh, the fact that the church would be taken out of the earth, right, and then Jesus would come back. But he'd come back, and there would be a new, brand new heavens and a brand new earth. The old is destroyed. We don't know. It talks about NTC. Maybe it's a nuclear holocaust. We don't know. But, I mean, it's logical, maybe. Uh, it, it's burned up because of some, some kind of nuclear thing. But everything as we know it, this earth, as we know this earth, is going to be no more. And it's going to be replaced with a new earth. We don't know what that's going to be. I mean, it's kind of described, but we don't know. Uh, what it's going to look like. We don't we, we don't know where it's going to be a new uh, planet. We don't know any of that yet. But what we know is, is, is it's going to be new. And everything, everything that's everything that's on that earth at that time will be destroyed. The church is out of here. We're not here. But we will be on the new earth. Okay, I understand. But then we'll be destroyed, but it's not as a punishment. Like no, 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 I, I, no, I understand what you're saying. I understand. No, the, uh, yeah. the reason for the fraud was judgment. Right? That was just, that's God's judgment. Destruction of the earth as we know it today will be God's judgment. Yes. Yes, right. So, so yes, yes. It will be a result. The same, the same for the same the same reason that 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 God destroyed everything with the flood is is the reason for destruction of the earth, judgment, right? And then God was going to replace it with a new Eden. Let's let's just I'll just use that as a as, as an example, a new earth. Does that answer you, or, or you still got a question? But I want to try to answer your question if I can. Yes. Yes. That'll be judgment. Yes. 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 So, punishment of the wicked. Yes. God judge will judge and punish the wicked. No was righteous. Yes. Right. Uh, they, if, if when we're raptured, the righteous will be taken away, and all that's left is wicked. Hallelujah. That will be destroyed. Yes. Okay. Huh? What about animals? I don't know about animals. Oh. I, 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 don't, I don't. I don't know. You know, people, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about animals. <laughs> but, but, God, well, well, let me let me let me let me let me let me, let me put it this way. Just 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 this is a human thought. Uh, God, it when God judged the earth before, He did save some animals along with it. So if 
if that was a shadow, right? If that was a shadow of the final judgment, if that was a picture of the final judgment, then there will be animals saved. If that was a picture. Scriptures don't tell us whether animals will be in heaven or not, but we can make an, we can make some assumptions based on what God has done throughout history. If he saved the if he saved animals, he did save animals, right? He, he, he said, put two of every kind, and the only reason he put two is put a male and a female so that they could reproduce. But right? so they were saved. Uh, so, so we can we can assume, I think, based on what God did before and Scripture, that animals will be not be destroyed. Now, how God saves them, whether they're raptured with the church, we don't know. We don't know any of that. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's deep, but that's that's the best that's the best I can do. <laughs> and, and the best like, I try to base everything on scripture. So I, it, the, my basis is what God did before. <laughs> All right, let's. <laughs> <Is that it? laughs> okay. <laughs> any any 